今日は SBI ホールディングスの北尾義孝社長にお越しいただいています。北尾さん、よろしくお願いします。Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And that short intro clip, that was Mr. Kitao, the CEO of SBI Holdings in Japan, largest outside shareholder of Ripple. And speaking this morning on CNBC Nikkei about the acquisition of the Shinsei Bank and also his deep partnership. That he has going on with Sumitomo Banking Corporation, the second largest bank in Japan by assets. Yeah, he's really getting close to realizing his vision, which is to be the fourth mega bank. Now let's look at his big ODL announcement. This is where he uses the on demand liquidity, which is leveraging XRP, the digital asset, as a bridge currency. He is expanding on that too. Take a look. This announcement is under the umbrella of SBI VC Trade, and it is、um, one of the many crypto exchanges that SBI has a hand in. The exchange, in particular, is the one that seems to handle all the ODL, on demand liquidity. And what they're doing here in the announcement is they're restructuring the flow of XRP. It will now accommodate multiple users. And you can take advantage of that supply that sits on SBI VC Trade and eliminate the pre funding in the corridor destinations that you are running in. So we see here that SBI opened up the corridor to the Philippines here, and they do so with their holding company, SBI Remit. And now they've added Asian Net, and Asian Net can go direct. Grab the XRP from VC, the VC trade site. And、um, what's really super interesting is we've got a corridor here that takes us to China. Now, it could be the new user that was announced in Hong Kong. I'm not sure, but I find that very, very interesting. So we see、uh, Mr. Kitao restructuring so that everybody who is getting involved. In ODL in this part of the world, we'll be able to utilize that supply that sits on SBI VC Trade. And when we get into the details of that announcement, you can see here that this new ODL renewed design is going to connect with multiple operators. So I can imagine that、uh, just a big pile of XRP is going to sit in a pool. That people can dip into from Japan and want to utilize the digital asset to move money into corridors all over the world. And you can bet that there's going to be many banks, the many banks that he has under his umbrella that are going to be tapping this system. And in reading the final paragraph here, going forward, We will continue to strengthen the superiority of ODL in international remittance services and expand the use cases of crypto assets by promoting the expansion of multiple domestic and overseas fund transfer companies and remittance destination countries. So, this is going to be a beginning of something very big. Moving right along, here we are on the Spend a Bits website. This is a company that I've been involved with for almost two years now. Wow, I just can't believe how time flies. And it is licensed in Canada and it's building out. It's an app that's built on the XRP ledger and it is one of the absolute best ways to move and transfer and store Bitcoin. There is a new video that was completed today and I want to share it with you. Do enjoy. So, what does Spend the Bits do? Spend the Bits is that market participant who has made Bitcoin transfers not only fast, but more importantly, extremely secure. Spend the Bits app is available for both iPhone and Android users for the easy transfer of Bitcoin at all times. The app can also be used as a wallet to store Bitcoin. The process of activating the wallet is automated. The XRP ledger, which is one of the most secure and widely adopted blockchain technologies, 
underpins the services of Spend the Bits. This adds multiple layers of security to the funds of users, both when Bitcoin is in the wallet or it's transferred. So with all that said, what are the features and uses of Spend the Bits? Well, the app can be used to top up Bitcoin from any exchange or ATM machine with a simple scan of the Bitcoin mainnet QR code. Bitcoin added to the app can then be stored in the wallet or can be used to make purchases at partner merchants. Bitcoin stored in Spend the Bits wallet is one of the fastest, most cost-effective and eco-friendly ways to make payments and Spend the Bits helps Canadians harness Bitcoin's potential. Transfers using Spend the Bits user interface can be completed within three to five seconds from source to destination. In other words, it's incredibly quick. And the app is available in Canada with an expanding ecosystem that will span more and more countries and include more widely adopted crypto assets as time unfolds. Spend the Bits is the leading Bitcoin transfer app, expanding its footprints in Canada as the most trusted partner for digital currencies. The app is based on the time-tested XRP ledger, which is in wide usage across the global financial system. Spend the Bits takes a few seconds to transfer Bitcoin from one wallet to another thanks to its ultra-fast interface. And what separates Spend the Bits from others is the reliance of the app on the XRP ledger to secure transfer of funds. If you live in Canada and you're interested in becoming a user, you can ask them a question if you want to at spend underscore the underscore bits on Twitter. If you are an investor and you are curious about the potential opportunities, reach out to the CEO, Jay. I'm sure he would love to talk to you. I saw a fun picture today on Twitter. This is Emi Yoshikawa on the left and Brad Garlinghouse on the right. And Brad is showing off one of his metal stickers that he received from a very important XRP member here in Japan, Daikoku. And I uh, am lucky enough to have one that he did for both Moon Chaser and myself uh, that I treasure. I have a little stack, a little, a little stack that I um, am carefully handing out to very special people. Uh, but what I wanted to tell you is that um, the one that uh, Brad is holding. Um, I was lucky enough to get one of those along with the one of Chris Larson. And how it was presented to me was very unique. Uh, this is a book that was written by Giant Gox here in Japan. It's, it's about Ripple. And on books in Japan, there is uh, this sash that it wraps the outside of the book and it is called an obi. And this obi is on um, almost almost all the books have obis in Japan, even the softbound books. Uh, but when I was given this book as a gift, I noticed that tucked inside the obi were two of those metal stickers, one of Chris Larson and one of Brad Garlinghouse. So I think I really received a treasure there. But this just leads me to the fluff. Let's go. So let's just look at a couple of really beautiful examples of Obi. This is a very stylized version that would be worn by mostly very young women. And then this one is very special. It is worn only by Maiko-san. Maiko-san are the apprentice geisha. And uh, they're just absolutely stunning in uh, every sense of the word. But you will only find this style worn by the Maiko-san. And this particular style you'd most likely see worn in Tokyo. The kimono itself is a very lightweight, I think maybe even a linen fabric. It is a summer kimono, but beautiful. Now this isn't a kimono, this is a yukata. Yukata is made of cotton and this is definitely summer style, but very, very cute and creative made by someone who has some fashion sense. And some more unique fashion. This is somebody who is inspired by Sailor Moon. Uh, just, you know, anything goes. And girls just love to create something that's never been done before. This is a perfect example of that. And if you've been on the fence about getting 
any of the private equity that is on the link to website. The link for that is in the description of this video. I wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger because that 1000 XRP per every $10,000 investment is going to end on Sunday evening. And if you're wondering if you're a qualified investor, I have the video that explains what the qualifications are. Have a listen. In this video, we're going to talk about whether you qualify as an accredited or sophisticated investor if you live in the US, Canada, United Kingdom, or Australia. These are our four top jurisdictions on the Link2 platform. And if you don't live in either of these jurisdictions, that does not mean that you can't invest on our platform. Head over to our website to see the requirements for your jurisdiction. But for the sake of this video, we're focusing on those four. Let's start with the United States and Canada, who both have very similar accreditation requirements. If you live in the US or Canada, you qualify as an accredited investor if you meet specific income, wealth, or professional requirements. And you only need to meet one of these to be considered accredited. You are an accredited investor if you are an individual whose income exceeds $200,000 in each of the two most recent years, or $300,000 in joint income with a person's spouse. And you reasonably have to expect to reach the same level of income in the current year. Next, the wealth requirement. If you are an individual whose net worth exceeds $1 million, excluding the value of your primary residence, you are accredited. And finally, if you are a FINRA registered representative and hold a Series 7, 65, or 82, you meet accreditation status. Outside of individuals, certain entities with over $5 million in assets or certain regulated entities such as banks, savings and loan associations, registered broker-dealers, insurance companies, registered investment companies, business development companies, licensed small business investment companies, which are not subject to the asset test, are considered accredited. It's worth mentioning that dollars for the sake of both the U.S. and Canada are denominated in their respective domestic currencies. Now, on to the United Kingdom. In the UK, the nomenclature is a little different. Instead of being an accredited investor, you are a qualified investor. So, how do you become a qualified investor? Well, similar to the US and Canada, you can be a qualified investor through income and wealth tests. For the income test, if you earn at least £100,000 a year, you can self-certify as a qualified investor. For the asset test, if you have net assets excluding your property and pensions of at least £250,000, you can self-certify yourself as a high net worth individual or a qualified investor. There are other methods of achieving qualified investor status. This includes individuals who have made at least one investment in an unlisted security in the previous two years, or have been a member of a business angels network for at least six months, or have worked in a professional capacity in the provisions of finance, SMEs in the last two years, or in the provision of private equity, or are or have been within the last two years, a director of a company with a turnover of at least 1 million pounds. So that's the United Kingdom. Now on to our last jurisdiction we will discuss, Australia. In Australia, being a sophisticated investor is similar to being an accredited investor or a qualified investor. Much like the previous jurisdictions, there are asset and income tests. If you're an individual who has a gross income of 250,000 Australian dollars for each of the last two financial years, you meet the income requirements as a sophisticated investor. If you have net assets of at least 2.5 million Australian dollars, you meet the wealth requirements of a sophisticated investor. In Australia, you can also be considered a professional investor if you are an individual who controls gross assets of 10 million Australian dollars or hold an Australian financial services license. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye bye.